Police want the public to be on the alert as they search for two men in connection with Wednesday's shooting in Eglistan. Dominica holds successful pilot of its CXC online testing platform. And L'Express de Zeal to unveil a new playing field in Dubla as it celebrates its 30th anniversary. I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details after this. First up, police want you to be on the alert as they search for two men who they believe can assist as they investigate Wednesday's shooting death of 29-year-old Glenn Alphonse of Girodel. Alphonse was shot as he sat with other passengers on a bus in Eggleston. Jeremy and Randolph Gustav are from Bells and live in Yampis. The police would like to solicit the support of the general public in locating the whereabouts of Jeremy Gustav and Randolph Gustav, male adults of Bells, who are known to be residing in Yampis with family connections in Eggleston. The police believe that these two men can assist with the investigations. The general public is advised to be alert as it is believed that Jeremy and Randolph Gustav are armed. Two armed men shot Glenn Alphonse on Wednesday afternoon as he sat on a passenger bus. Alphonse reportedly died on his way to hospital. In other news, now an advocate for sexual minorities calls for leaders across society to play their part in encouraging people to get their HIV testing done. Javion Nelson is Director of Projects and Strategy of the Jamaica Forum for Lesbians, All Sexuals and Gays, or JFLAG. He recently concluded a training workshop for healthcare workers in Dominica in collaboration with the HIV and AIDS Response Program of the Ministry of Health. The workshop focused on making healthcare services more accessible and friendly to members of the key population, which includes young people, sex workers, gays, lesbians, and transsexuals. We need to get lots of people, so people who are key influencers, to do tests publicly. Of course, we know that the status, that whatever their status is, will not be disclosed. But we need pastors, other religious leaders. We need um, key opinion leaders, you know, members of the media. We need politicians. We need lawyers and judges to come forward and work with the National HIV AIDS program and get a test so that people can understand that this is not something that you need to be scared of and that if you are tested positive, it's better you know than you do not know. And when you test and if you are tested positive, then there is a national program which will provide support to you and ensure that you are put on, on treatment. He notes that knowing one's status through testing for HIV and AIDS means individuals can protect themselves as well as prevent late diagnosis in people with the virus. He commends Dominica's healthcare workers for their interest and willingness to serve members of the key population. The types of questions that they asked and their interventions at particular time were um, evidence of just how much they were processing the information, how much they have thought about what they need to do as healthcare workers to help to improve health services and what they can do in their own sphere of influence, even outside of um, their healthcare facilities. And I think one of the key things that we saw was at the end of the day yesterday, where they all said um, they're going to lead by example. And that's one of the key ways in which they can help to make health services more friendly to members of the key population. I think um, the training shows that there has been enormous progress, I think, in Dominica around just addressing stigma and discrimination. In more news now, Dominica is reporting the successful piloting of online testing for CXC exams earlier this year. During a visit to the island last year, CXC Registrar Glenroy Cumberbatch held discussions with the Ministry of Education on e-testing and e-marketing of Caribbean Examination Council CXC exams. Cumberbatch had disclosed that the regional examinations body was moving towards having all territories write CXE online in the near future. While CXE did not offer full-scale testing this year, CXE local registrar Magali Celestine says the pilot testing done in January was successful, as well as the pilot during the May-June season for exam writing. The only thing is because most persons are accustomed to paper, then having to adapt to the screen and clicking instead of shading, that was a little challenging for some, but um, all of them were able to complete on time and they were successful. We received their results. They were all successful at the exams. In May-June, we introduced only one subject online, which was technical drawing. The Isaiah Thomas Secondary School, they did that exam using AutoCAD. 
but it's our hope that by May, June next year, all the schools will be doing technical drawing online, among other subjects where we see fit. Celestine says that CXC plans to go, on, to go fully on stream with all 32 subjects in 2018, and Dominica will decide which of these subjects it can write electronically. CXC is now offering two modalities of exams, paper-based and online. No territory is really forced to come online in 2018 when they are fully going to put their, both the paper ones and the paper twos online. So it's based on the readiness of the territory, based on infrastructure in place, if you have the necessary materials, the equipment, computers, internet, etc. But we are moving in the direction of online testing. And um, we are advised by CXC that we do not need to do all the 32 subjects offered online. The only thing is, once the territory has decided to do a particular subject online, all the centers must be ready for online. So no paper-based will be produced for that particular subject. The local CXC registrar also revealed that come 2018, CXC will be offering CCSLC, CAPE and CXC Papers 1 and Papers 2 online. The Caribbean Development Bank CDB has pledged continued support for the Caribbean Water and Sewerage Association, Kawasa, to carry out its mandate. The association, which recently wrapped up a two-day meeting here, was addressed by the head of the Economic Infrastructure Division of the CDB, L. O'Reilly Lewis. Lewis says there are two main issues affecting the region's water sector. The first one, and we are all aware of this, and we almost take it for granted, is the extremely high levels of non-revenue water. And this is a regional plague of the water sector. In some jurisdictions, it's been estimated to be as high as 70%. We are aware of the severe impacts that this can have on the ability of the utilities to achieve financial sustainability. And I am aware that there are several initiatives by individual utilities um, which focus on addressing this issue. Notwithstanding these initiatives, I am of the opinion that we are collectively an individual, that we as collectively and as individual countries need to be more aggressive in addressing this massive blight on our industry. The CDB official further noted that another obstacle facing Kawasa members is the resilience of their water systems in the face of challenges posed by climate change. It is generally accepted in all parts of the world, not in all parts of the world, that climate change will have a negative impact on the region's water supply. It is wise as forecasted that the total amount of annual rainfall will decrease in most countries. It is also expected that individual rainfall events will have higher intensity, which will lead to damaged infrastructure through landslides and flooding. In addition, Droughts are expected to be more frequent and to last for longer periods. I am sure many of you are already seeing these trends impacting your utilities. Lewis says that despite the challenges facing Kawasa, the CDB is committed to helping the association move forward. We have enhanced our focus on the water sector. And over the last 10 years, we have lent more in the sector than we have in the previous 30 years of existence. Our lending in the sector will surpass over $300 million by the end of this year. I can commit that CDB will continue not only to continue to support Kawasa, but also to seek to enhance the levels of engagement with you. Your mandate is consistent with our mission and our strategy at the bank. The fifth Caribbean Water Operators Conference was held under the theme, Connecting Water Operators, Strengthening Utilities. You are watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, L'Express Desil gives back as it celebrates 30 years in Dominica. Thank you for staying with us. Regional Ferry Services L'Express Desil will mark its 30th anniversary on island by unveiling its quarter of a million dollar investment in improving the Dubla playing field. 
The investment came following a visit by the company's owner and managing director to the community post-tropical storm Erica. The company had previously committed to funding the rehabilitation of the field prior to the storm. Sunday's dedication ceremony of the Dubla renovated playing field and pavilion is expected to be addressed by Prime Minister Skerritt and the French ambassador. L'Express de Zille's manager, direct, managing director Roland Belmar told the media on Friday he admired the unifying spirit of the Dubla community. Why Dublin? Very simple fishing village. Very simple one, very clean one, with uh, charming people and, uh, that are fighting to, to, to get funds to make projects and so on. So we just think, okay, let's help this one. You cannot help everyone. Instead of just giving one dollar then one dollar there, one dollar there, we said, for this 30th anniversary, let's put some money a quarter million dollars is a lot of money. Let's put money on one project that will last. And why we were very interested in this project is that when, the, when Mr. Malcolm Bertrand uh, told us, we want, yes, we want to, to put that in this field back in service because it is where all the population meet for sports, but also for social events. We like it because, because the fi this field appear as the place for ensemble ensemble, that is our signature, ensemble ensemble, a place where you get together. And for us, renovating this playing ground is just like renovating a place ensemble ensemble, somewhere, somewhere where everyone meets. That's the idea behind it. 37 years ago this year, Dominica made the critical decision to decentralize its primary health care services. The primary health care system here was forced into operation the year after Hurricane David devastated the country in 1979. Primary health care director Dr. Laura Esprey says Hurricane David posed as a severe challenges to the Ministry of Health, where health care was centralized at the time, making it difficult to have services where the people needed it most. 1980, a very significant year in Dominica, where we recognize oh, we need to do something about reorganizing our health services. And we had to focus a lot on what we call decentralization. Now, you must know that there are different types of decentralization. But one of the things that stand out the most for Dominica was a specific type to geographical decentralization. And I'm sure you will know here in what happened in 1978 with the declaration of the Alma Atta, remember? It marked the acceptance of primary health care services as a core policy for the World Health Organization, right? And certainly, it represented a commitment on a global scale to improve health, especially for persons who were most disadvantaged. So that helped to propel things and, of course, give birth to our beautiful primary health care um, services. Delivering a presentation to visiting nursing students from the Barbados Community College, Dr. Esprit outlined some of the benefits of the primary health care system. It offers a wide range of services to the clients. Okay? Persons can be referred to secondary care at a timely fashion. It facilitates an ongoing, a strengthened relationship between the clients and their clinicians. Okay? So, I'm almost, so, so continuity of care is very critical. And of course, it facilitates the promotion of healthy lifestyle, disease prevention, and early detection. You know, things you learn in class. Dr. Esprit says with the help of the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, Dominica is in the process of developing a policy for adolescent and youth health and active aging. Dominica's volcanic history and geographic evolution of the island has become the interest of American-based university students. These American geology students are writing their research thesis on the island's volcanic attributes and landscape. Dr. Holly Fry is the director of a Keck geology, geology Consortium project focused on enriching undergraduate education through development of high-quality research experience. 18 U.S. colleges and universities are members of the consortium. So we have visited uh, the other hydrothermal sites on the island, the Cold Soufriere, Watton Waven, uh, Sulphur Springs. Uh, but as well, we like to visit uh, some of the lava domes, uh, Mikatrine, uh, uh, Morno Diab, uh, Morne Trompetant. There's a nice quarry there with rocks uh, that, that uh, we were able to collect. 
and also some of the coastal uh, deposits, the thick deposits of the uh, ignimbrites or the pumice class, the rocks that can float in water. Um, we're interested in, in that uh, chemistry and sort of the uh, volcanic history and evolution of the island. Students of three of the consortium's member colleges, including Union College, Oberlin College, and the Smithsonian Institute, recently visited the island to study its landscape. There will be an interim report uh, that we uh, send to for Forestry uh, as well as ODM uh, within uh, the next several months after we get our initial analyses. And then we will have uh, final reports in the form of long form uh, theses that the students uh, prepare. So we will share all of those, that, that data uh, with Forestry and ODM. A learning institution celebrating its 90th year of existence has encouraged its departing students to leave behind a legacy they can be proud of. The words from graduate of the Wesley High School and director of the Information Communication Technology Unit, Jermaine Jean-Pierre, as she addressed the 2017 graduation ceremony on Thursday. Your legacy is not something you must work on as a senior, but rather something that you must work on every day. I urge you to take your talent and make it count. Take your talent and help someone around you to be a better person. Maintain high principles. Remain faithful to the standards that you have set for yourself. Don't settle for average. Work on making a difference. Whether it is something small, something big, this will end up being a big legacy. Jean-Pierre also encouraged the young ladies to work hard to achieve their dreams. Dreams are good, but they are just that. They do not come true without hard work. If you want, if you know what you want to become in life, then stop dreaming of becoming and work hard at making it a reality. If you are not yet sure of what you aspire to do or become at this time, that's fine too. But I encourage you to stay open to opportunities. Try something new, work hard, and then work even harder. The theme for the graduation ceremony was living a legacy of lifelong learning. Your education has not come to an end with your high school graduation. In fact, you have just concluded one of the first phases and there is much more in store for you. Remember, we live in a global village and you must be prepared to accept opportunities which may take you away from your homeland and your region. Remember, when you cease to learn, you are as good as dead. 38 students graduated from the Wesley High School with Elena Benjamin being awarded valedictorian and uh, Chanella Buckmeyer being named salutatorian. Coming up, the Chit Chat segment with producer of Link Magazine, Parry Bellot, with some highlights from his latest magazine. In this particular issue, I'm very happy about a, a, an article we have from the former president, he's a business consultant, His Excellency Elliot Williams, where he talks about the problems that the small hotels especially are having, despite the, the access to more money that government has granted through the aid bank, very low interest loans, but a lot of that sector is so already heavily indebted that they cannot access that money. So in his article, he talks about maybe a little review on what maybe can be done to make the whole thing work more. Because the idea is to build our hotel sector. We all appreciate tourism is perhaps the future, not when, that we're neglecting agriculture. And incidentally, in one of the Link magazines, this particular one, we have a feature, several features on, on, on agriculture, you know, which I'm proud of. Some articles written, some, some statistics and so on. Talking of statistics, this latest magazine has statistics in trade, has statistics about our agricultural production up to 2016. No, it wasn't easy to get that data from the statistics department, let me tell you. It takes a couple months of hounding them up and so on. But I thank Mrs. Carrot for finally coming through with, with the important statistics there. And uh, so people know how the economy is doing. Because we focused on the economy, we also had a very interesting article from a very noted economist and writer, someone based in Barbados called Dr. Basil Springer. A lot of people know of him. And he's talking a lot about how to stimulate the Barbados economy because they have been having problems too. Well, guess what? A lot of what he's saying has applicability to the Dominica situation. So we encourage everyone to pick up 
this last like, magazine, by the way, available from Jay's Super Stationery Store. We also sell at S Smart um, new, new Supermarket. That's in the north of Roseau. And in the south of Roseau, at Green Supermarket, we also have things available there. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bellot. We hope we'll have you again uh, soon on perhaps a different topic. Uh, well, that, maybe that, uh, another edition of Link. Publisher <laughs> of Link Magazine, Parry Bellot. Uh, sports is next. Stay with us. First up in sports, the player draft of the Cricket West Indies Professional Cricket League was underway on Friday where all six franchises got an opportunity to pick from a pool of athletes. The Volcanoes pick comprised Tariq Gabriel, Ronald Cato, Kirk Edwards, Ray Jordan and Liam Sebastian. The pre-selected players included Devon Thomas, Tyrone Teofield, Andre Fletcher, Sonal Ambrose, Shane Chillingford, Delon Johnson, Shernon Lewis, Ozzy Alexander and Obed McCoy. All six franchises participated in the player draft through a nominated representative. The player draft was organized with the goal of achieving an equitable distribution of the available player talent in the regional 4-day and regional Super 50 tournaments. Each franchise is allowed to contract a minimum of 15 players. Ten pre-selected players and five players drafted from a pool of 15 players contracted to the franchise. A minimum of two must be from outside and home territory. Each franchise is allowed one international player at its own cost. The player draft took place at the Pegasus Hotel in Jamaica. We move on to football because Dominica finished second in the 2017 Winwood Island Senior Men's Tournament and undefeated just one point away from host Grenada on Thursday. Dominica needed a win in their final match to capture their first championship title in the tournament, but drew two all against St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Julian Wade opened the scoring for Dominica in the first half from the penalty spot for his third goal in four matches. St. Vincent answered with two quick goals for a 2-1 advantage at the interval. Brian Thomas got the equaliser for Dominica with a beautiful header from a corner kick in the second half. Dominica ended the competition on six points, one point less than the eventful winners host country Grenada, who lost their final match against Barbados 0-2. Glenson Prince of Dominica got the Golden Glove Award for Best Goalkeeper, with the Golden Boots going to Myron Samuel of St. Vincent. Nico Williams of Grenada was awarded MVP of the tournament. Meantime, national coach Rajesh Lachu says the tournament was a great experience for his team since it provided the opportunity for them to gauge their skills. From this tournament, I know we have a foundation to build with, with the players. More international games to work on those tactical things, a little more technical things also. But at least now we have a gauge and we came out and each team gave us fight. Nobody, no one lied down, so it wasn't easy football, so that pushed the players. As long as they keep getting pushed, they will become better. Moving on to cricket, South Africa finished the second day of the first test against England on 214 for 5 on Friday. Resuming on 357 for 5 from Thursday, England was all out on 458. Joe Root had an unbeaten 190, which helped give England a decent total. Moeen Ali contributed 87, Stuart Board 57, and Ben Stokes 56. Mon Morkel took 4 for 115, Vernon Philander 3 for 67, Kegi Sorobada 3 for 123 for South Africa. In reply, South Africa scored 214 with 5 wickets fallen. Dean Elgar added 54 and Temba Bovman 48 not out. Stuart Board took 2 for 27 and Moeen Ali 2 for 35. On the basketball scene, four games are on this weekend if weather permits in the 2017 Flow DABA League. Saturday's games take us to the Massac Hardcourt with a Division I opener between Detroit Blazers 2 and Massey United Insurance Sharks at 7 p.m. At 9, Blazers' premier side will be looking to defend home turf when they take on rivals Dr. Mac Prowlers. On Sunday, games move to Portsmouth, beginning with the Pitchless Sports Club Falcons and Hoyas in the under-17 matchup at 6 in the evening. At 8, Intellico Security Service Raiders will go head-to-head -head with Pitchless Sports Club Falcons.
Back with more cricket, we can tell you that the national leagues of the Dominica Cricket Association resume on the weekend with four matches. The Digital Augustus Gregor Premier Cricket League begins on Saturday with Grand Bay Credit Union Colts going up against Marino Sports Club at Winter Park. Meantime, in the Fort Young Hotel Intermediate League on Saturday, Ruben Bakery Christians will take on Marino Evergreen at Sofria. Over at Botanic Gardens, Point Michel Cricket Academy will do battle with Police Sports Club. Finally, Starlight Sports Club will go head-to-head -head with Galio Hurricanes at Botanic Gardens on Sunday. All matches begin at 11 in the morning. Sports continues with this item where outstanding athletes and institutions at the school level will be rewarded for their achievements in sports in 2016-2017 academic year at the 25th staging of the Sports Division Schools Awards on Saturday. Trophies and sports equipment will be given as rewards for outstanding performances in championships held in cricket, football, basketball, track and field, netball, volleyball and table tennis. Sports coordinator Trevor Schillingford and president of the Dominica Netball Association, Regina Walsh, are expected to address the function. The event will be held under the theme, Sport Development, a Shared Responsibility. Starting time is 10 a.m. at the Dominica State College Main Auditorium. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. Coming up, your weekend weather update. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Annie Courage Joseph. We begin this evening by taking a look at earlier infrared satellite imagery, which showed this area of cloudiness associated with Tropical Depression 4, which by this afternoon degenerated into a tropical wave. This wave is expected to move over the Lesser Antilles during the course of late Saturday into Sunday. Visible satellite imagery showed low-level clouds over Dominica during the course of the afternoon, which resulted in partly cloudy to cloudy skies. Radar imagery indicated some scattered showers over the Lesser Antilles during the afternoon. Conditions for tonight, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers. Tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers as well. Sea conditions, slight to moderate in open water with waves up to five feet. Conditions for the next three days. Again, tomorrow, Saturday, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers. The tropical wave is expected to result in an increase in cloudiness shower activity with the possibility of some thunderstorm activity on Sunday. Persons in areas prone to flooding, landslides, and falling rocks, you are advised to exercise extreme caution. And on Monday, paddy cloudy skies with brief showers. Across the region tomorrow, paddy cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers can be expected throughout the lesser Antilles. On the international scene, partly cloudy skies in New York, London and Beijing and some possible thunderstorm activity in Miami and Caracas. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.40 a.m. and set at 6.40 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Please remember that we are in the hurricane season. Please keep updated. Thank you and good evening. To end the news, the headlines again. Police warn the public to be on alert as they search for two men in connection with Wednesday's shooting in Eggleston. Dominica holds successful pilot of its CXE online testing platform. And L'Express des Îles to unveil a new playing field in Dubla as it celebrates its 30th anniversary in Dominica. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. To our viewers around the world, thank you for watching and have a great weekend.